think this might be our crowd for the evening. Um, I want to start by saying thank you for coming out tonight. Whatever is happening in your life, uh, it's brave of you to come to a service like this and acknowledge that there is pain in the world. And if you came to support people who are struggling this season, thank you for coming to be here and to bear witness to the pain and grief that exists within our lives here. So thank you for your bravery to come out tonight and to allow space together for people who aren't having the most joyous season of their life. I know in particular, looking around the room, there's a lot of people who are grieving tonight. And so if you are grieving someone that you've lost, to know that this is a safe place to show up exactly as you're feeling to be in the midst of that. We're gonna have a couple different parts of the service happening. It's gonna focus around the Advent wreath and the idea of a peace, love, hope, joy, and where that's lacking in people's lives. So we'll work through the service and light these candles and you'll have a chance to then pray for people who are struggling to find those things. During the service, we'll also have a time for anointing. And so if you would like a special blessing and an anointing, you can come up to the front and you can stand under the cross with me or you can kneel on the outside of the railings on either side to receive a blessing, whichever way you prefer. There's a lot of different ways to do an anointing as far as what we use for that. Tonight, we're going to use baptismal water from our font for that anointing. So you'll see me with a small dish of that water to remind you of your baptism. And if at any point during the service you'd like to come over and give your, make your, the sign of the cross on yourself as a reminder of your baptism, please free, feel free to do so. To start our worship tonight, we're going to take a moment to think about all of the ways that people struggle this time of year. So just take a moment of silence to think about that, um, not just the way that you're struggling, but how anyone might be struggling this time of year. We're going to have a time of a silence now where you are invited forward. We have markers and tape up here. And I want you to write down what that is. And you can be as specific or as vague as you want to be in what those struggles might be. And you, I encourage you to write down, use more than one piece of tape. We have plenty. So if you have several things to write down, feel free to write those down um, and think not only about yourself, but also Lord of Life, Renton, Washington, the world. Um, we can be as expansive with this as we want to. After you've written down your words, however many that are that there is, we're going to put them up here right on this vase. So you'll come up and put it right on the vase as a symbol of the things that were centered around tonight. So at any time now, you can come up in this silence and write those words. There's plenty of space for people and add it to the vase and then we will begin our worship and song. So I invite you to come up and write those words down as they come to you.
So often, even in worship, we hurry through things. On to the next part, on to the next song, we keep things moving along. Tonight, I encourage you to not rush through whatever you're feeling, through whatever part of the service we're at. Don't feel pressure about when to come up or when or where you are with your emotions. Don't let yourself be rushed through this, but instead be present to it. We will begin tonight by singing Come and Fill Our Hearts, which is a song we've been familiar with in worship, but we'll sing all of the Advent candles in it as well, replacing it each time. So we'll sing it four times and replace the word each time. That'll be up on the screens for you. And so we center ourselves with Come and Fill Our Hearts. In this Advent season, we light a candle of hope. Tonight, we light this candle for all who feel hopeless. Tonight, this light shines bright for prisoners, for patients of chronic illness, for individuals fighting to get out of debt, for refugees waiting for a safe place to rest and for relationships that have no clear way forward. Tonight, we light this candle and pray for the hopeless. You are now invited to come forward. You may light a candle and place it in either container of sand as a symbol of your prayer. You are welcome to continue to write words that you would like to acknowledge exist in this world that represent our pain and heartache. Since I'll be doing anointing right up at the front, you can go behind to put those on the vase. Um, and if you'd like to come up and get anointed, please do so. And we'll light all four candles. And so at any point during those four times, you can come up for anointing. Um, please come. God hears your prayers.
we pray together. May God's hope find them now. A familiar tune of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. The words have been changed for our worship tonight to reflect what we're singing. Um, we will sing it through twice. In this season, we light a candle of peace. Tonight, we light a candle of peace for all those who need peace. This light shines bright, and we pray for the anxious and unsettled, for those in seasons of transition and discernment, for all who struggle with mental health, and for people navigating rocky new beginnings.
we pray together. May God's peace find them now. In this season, we light a candle of joy. Tonight, we light a candle of joy for all who need it. May this light shine for those who are overburdened, overstretched, worn out, and worn down. May this candle shine for those who need a good laugh, even in seasons of grief. We pray together. May God's joy find them now.
In this season, we light the candle of love. Tonight, we light the candle of love again for all who need it. May this light shine for loved ones lost, for love that has been betrayed, for love that has been neglected or forgotten, and for all who long for love and find themselves lonely. We pray together. May God's love find them now.
I invite you to pray with me this prayer. Creator God, for so long we have been bending under the weight of our own grief, exhaustion, and stress. Tonight we are leaning toward you in hope. Speak a word of encouragement to us now. Help us to see that we are not alone and warm our weary bones from the inside out. We are listening. We are seeking after you. Open hearts, we pray. Amen. Our first reading tonight is from Isaiah chapter, one, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All the people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flower falls, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion up on a high mountain, you who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice and shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say, say to the town of Judea, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. When we find this reading in the midst of Isaiah, it has been generations of people waiting to go home to Israel very quick history lesson for you. There was a time when the Israelites in Jerusalem were thriving, and then they were overthrown by an occupation. Some of them were killed, some were left behind in Jerusalem, and their leaders, both religious and political, were taken far away to Babylon and kept there. And they were holding on to the hope that they would go home and it's been generations of waiting to go home. It's children's children at this point, people who have only ever heard stories told about Jerusalem. And in this text, comfort, comfort, oh my people, the time is now. This idea of God coming to us was a new one. But now it's one that we live every day. When they talk about the hills being made flat and the mountains being made flat, the valleys filling up, it was a twofold example. One was that it would make it easier for people to get back to Jerusalem. The treacherous journey, not only do you get to go home, but it will be easier than you thought. And also, God, who is believed to live only in the temple, is going to come to you too. And we wouldn't see that fully come uh, to how we know it now until Jesus comes. But it's another sign that there is nothing that will get in the way of God being with you. Not valleys of grief, not mountains of stress, the journey to God is easy because God makes it so. Comfort, comfort, oh my people, God is here.
have a time of reflection. Now we'll just sit in silence and reflect and then have our second reading. A reading from John, the 14th chapter. All of this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not let your hearts be troubled might feel odd to you tonight. It might feel like it's a little bit of a discord within yourself when we have been praying for people who need joy and love and peace and people who are desperately longing for hope. These are very troubled hearts. And if all we had was what the world has to give us, we would never find peace. But Jesus says, I am going to give you a peace that you've never known before. And I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit so that when you hear the words, you are never alone, you know it's true because the Holy Spirit walks alongside us as close as our own breath. When Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, he means that we get to think bigger than a sinful world. There are times that our hearts most certainly should be troubled. To the sake that there are people who need these things we have prayed for tonight. But our hearts do not need to be troubled about where God is or what the promises of God for us are. God grants us a peace and a reassurance through his birth this holiday season and through his death and resurrection on a cross. There is nothing that will separate you from God. Do not let your hearts be troubled about where God is. God is here. We wrote these words on this vase tonight as a sign of places where we ourselves are struggling and where we know others struggle. Especially this time of year, it can be tempting to keep these things hidden in the dark. And every time of year, it can be hard to admit the places in our lives where we struggle, where it might feel like we're lacking faith, where we don't know what the answer is.
we are called to not just hide the pieces of our life that are hard, to not just hide weariness, but instead to allow Christ to shine in the midst of it so that we can talk about it, so that we can form community around this, and so that we may be reminded that we don't have to hide the things that worry us or scare us or are hard. But instead, Christ illuminates those things so that we can see them more clearly and see where God is at work and so that we can help each other through them. We pray together now a prayer of gratitude. And I invite you, I'll read the yellow, and I invite you to respond with the white. God of joy and God of our weariness, you have brought our worn down hearts to you this night. We have brought our weariness to you this night because we know that you are present with us in the valleys. Therefore, as we prepare to leave the safe protection of this sanctuary, as we prepare to return to the fullness of our lives, For we cannot move from weariness to joy without you. We will now receive our benediction. You are invited to stay in this space and pray for as long as you would like to. And when you're ready to leave, you can... Um, meet us in the narthex or in the fellowship hall wherever people tend to congregate or make your way home um, as it's getting late but please feel free to stay and pray continue to light candles um, for as long as you'd like receive the benediction family of faith as you leave this place today you go into a weary world so speak tenderly do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection, hold on to hope, and remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved, so go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. <laughs>